Hello there, Mark Cunningham here. And in this video, we're going to use the Australian version of Xero to have a look at some of the organization settings that you need to set up before you start using Xero for real. Now this lesson is actually part of a full course. So if you want to learn more about Xero, then check out the links in our description below. So that's it from me. Let's jump into Xero and get started. So if you just go to the main menu and then settings, and the one we'll start with is this organization details. Okay, so on this page, you just put in a fair bit of basic information about your business and about yourself. So you can put in the name and the trading name. You can up upload a logo if you like, and you can put a few details in such as your organization type and your line of business. Your Australian business number is an important one to put in if you've got an ABN. And then further down, you've got things like your postal address and your physical address, um, telephone, email, and website, etc. So I'm not going to fill all this out here um, for our fake company because we don't really need it. Um, but I just wanted to show you that that's where that is. But if you are going to do um, BAS returns, um, activity statements, um, you do need to fill in your ABN just down here so it comes through properly. All right, so we'll just go back to settings. And the next thing I wanted to show you is actually a really important one, which is users. And this is where you go to set the permissions for each of your users. So we've only got one user in this account, which is uh, me at the moment or the fake name that I'm using. And it's got all my permissions listed along there. So it's going to be practically everything because I'm, I'm the only user and I'm the administrator of the account. But as you add more users to your zero file, you'll end up with a list of users down here. And you just need to go into each one and make sure that you're only giving them permission to do and see things that they should have that permission for. And the way you do that is you just go into this little menu here for each user and go into change permissions. Okay, now this is um, a pretty complicated screen and you just need to go down all these different panels here and just see what exactly you want each user to have access to. So for me, being really the only person in this account, I've got permission to do practically everything there. There's a few little things missing. So if I was to use projects, for example, um, that would be ticked. You can see that I can't untick it at the moment because I'm the only user. And then there's different um, levels of access there. So you just need to choose which level of access you would want that particular user to have. And then of course you've got payroll. So if you don't want them to have permission um, to do things like posting pay runs and looking at payroll reporting, then you would untick that. So I'll just tick that for me. And then when you come down here, there's a fairly big panel here for business and accounting. Now I can't untick this for me because I'm the only user, but if, if you have multiple users, then you'll be able to untick that if you don't want them to have any permission at all to do any of these things down here. And you can see there's a lot of things, there's invoicing and um, bills and bank accounts and uh, reports and all kinds of things. And there's also two levels, there's a standard and there's an advisor. So you can see here that the standard, there's a little note there saying, this role suits business owners and admin staff that manage the day-to-day -day business and accounting. So that will be your internal staff. And then if you click on advisor, you can see that it's ideal for accountants and bookkeepers. So these are, are usually people who would be external and you give them permission to actually access your zero account directly if they do your um, tax returns or your BAS returns or something like that. But again, even if you choose standard or advisor, you've still got to go down the list and just make sure you've given them permission to everything you want them to have permission to. So for an accountant, you probably would tick submit BAS and um, or conversely, if you don't want them to have permission for something, maybe you don't want them to look into your bank accounts or have admin access, then you can untick that. So it's really a process um, that you've got to go through to pick um, everything that you need for every particular person. So for me, I would probably just choose that I'm an advisor and tick um, Bass as well and just give myself permission for everything, being the only person using this. So now that I've done that, I'll just hit update. So we just come back to this screen here and you can see now it says submit BAS there. I've got permission for that now. 
Um, so the other things I wanted to show you is along the top here, there is a login history as well. So you can click on that and it will give you a, a page that shows all the different users and when they've logged into Xero, which is good for security. Um, I'm the only user, so there's no point going in there and having a look at mine. But if you've got multiple users, you might want to have a look at that. The next one is invite a user. And this is where you can go to actually um, invite users to have access to your Xero account. So you just put the usual sort of details in there, tick what you want them to have access to, and then you can personalize a message as well. And you can send the invite and that will send it through email. So um, particularly if you've got like an external accountant or something like that, you can send them an invite this way and then they can get in and access um, your account. So I'll just go back to users here. Okay. And the last one here is add zero support. All right. And if you add zero support, um, you can give them permission um, to have a look in your zero account as well. Um, so obviously if you need help, then that's something that you might want to do. And you can just remove that later on if you want that to be removed again, just like that. Okay. So that's the users. So we'll just go back to settings. Another thing that you might want to look at before you start getting right into using Xero is the email settings. So if we click into that, what we've got here is a place where you can set up templates for the emails that are sent directly out of Xero. So if you're sending people invoices or remittances or, or something like that, you can actually change the templates. Um, for the emails that are sent out and you do that here. So you can also change the default email address for your account, which you can see there, it says I'm a logged in user. Um, the emails are sent using my name with replies going to, and then it's got an email address there, which I've blanked out. If you want to change that, you just go into edit and you can um, change that for your account. So the other thing, like I was just saying, are these templates. So let's just click into that. We'll just go into edit. Okay, and what we've got here is we've got a whole lot of templates that are set up for things like sending statements and purchase orders, credit notes, remittances, sales invoices, quotes, etc. And you can go in and you can change these. So before I open that up, I'll just click onto this help article at the top here. And if I scroll down, I just want to go to this adding email templates article. Okay, and there's these placeholders that you can use for your email types. So I'll just open that up and you get this pretty big, scary looking table here, but I'll just show you what that's all about. I'll just scroll back up to the top. So if we go back into zero and we'll just open one up. So let's say we've got the sales invoice one. We'll just open that. Okay, so what you've got here is you can give it a name and then you can tick this box if you want to include a quick link to the online invoice um, in, in, in the actual email that you send out. And then you've got your message. So you've got your subject line at the top and you've got your message down here. So this is the message that will be sent out of zero with your sales invoices that you send directly um, to your clients. And you can see within there there's text, but there's also um, these placeholders that are in the square brackets. And those placeholders are over here. That's what these are. So what you want to do, if you actually do want to change this, is you need to have a look at the placeholders that you can use for that type of email and exactly what um, the placeholder is going to put in there so you can craft your, your email messages properly. So it's, it's a little bit of a process you have to go through if you do want to make changes. So maybe um, you don't want the trading name to show up in the subject line or your contact name so you can get rid of one of those or maybe you want to put something different in there so you can go and either hard code something in, you can just type something in or you can find a placeholder with whatever information you want in there. And the same goes for all this text in the body as well. And then obviously down the bottom you've got a sign off as well and maybe you don't want that to be your trading name, maybe you want something else there. So you can just change that too. So once you've made your changes, you can save it. 
and then you can go through and do the same thing for all of your email templates. So you'll see those templates being used as we go through the course and we do different things. So I just wanted to show you where that is and how you can make the changes and where the information is on that help article um, for the placeholders. Okay, so let's just go back to settings. And the next few things I wanted to show you are actually in the advanced settings. So just click on looking for advanced settings. Okay, and the first one is tax rates. So we'll just click in there. And this is where you go to choose your GST tax rates. So depending on the kind of business that you run, you may be able to use these um, this select few number of, of GST tax rates, and these are for the simpler bass. But if you have a more complicated business or you have a more complicated um, a tax um, regime in your business, then you may need to switch to the advanced rates. So if I click on that, you can see there we have even more tax rates now, including um, input tax there. So there's quite a few more there. So you're going to have to um, choose the right one uh, for your business and that will depend on what kind of business that you run and you can get that um, information off your tax accountant if you don't have it at hand. So I'll just actually change this back to basic just to show you that you can do this. Okay. And there you go, that's just back to the um, basic six tax rates there. All right, so that's one of them. If we go back into settings and advanced again, the last thing I wanted to show you is the financial settings. So we'll just click on that one. Okay, so in here, there's just a few things that you need to set up um, for your business to, and, you, and you really need to make sure you get these right. So the first one is the GST accounting method, whether it's accrual or cash or none. Then you also um, should put in the tax file number for your business. And then you've also got whether your GST is calculated uh, monthly or quarterly or annually, annually, etc. Now you've also got your pay as you go withholding period, which is mostly for um, the withholding tax that you pay um, on your staff. And again, you've got none monthly and quarterly. And then you've got your PAYG income tax method. So those are your income tax installments. If you run a company, for example, and you might pay some tax in advance every quarter, um, and then you might have an installment amount or you've got an income times rate amount, you can select your options here. And then down here, you've also got um, fringe benefits tax, fuel tax credits, and wine equalization tax. If any of those apply to your business, you need to tick them on here. And for all these settings, um, if you don't know what they are, you're going to have to contact your tax accountant and find out. So moving down, there's these tax defaults. Now, these aren't really um, that important um, to put in, but you can if you like. So for sales, for example, if you want your invoices to come up so that when you put in amounts, they're tax inclusive, as in inclusive of GST, then you can click that as the default. And you can also do it um, based on last sale or tax exclusive or no tax at all. Um, and you can do that for your bills as well. Now, the thing is, you can still change these on individual invoices and bills. So if you choose one option here, it's not like you can't change it later on. So um, it's, yeah, it, it's up to you. If you want to set them here, you can go ahead, but you can always change them later anyway. I'll just put that back to exclusive. And then finally down here, you've got these lock dates to stop data from being changed for a specific period. Um, so these are important if you want to actually make sure people can't go back into a previous financial year, for example, or even a previous month or quarter. If you do hard closes at the end of the month or the quarter and you don't want people to go back and make any changes to them, then you can put the dates in here. And then finally, you've got your time zone. Uh, I, I selected the time zone when I actually opened this zero file. So if you forgot to do that, or if it's still wrong, you can just change it there. And then when you're finished, just save it all, and then you're done. So I'll just click on save. Okay, that's great. That's all saved. So that's it for your initial organization settings in zero. Okay, that's it for this video. 
Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more free videos and also check out the links in the description below for our Zero courses. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.